everyone, Alexandra here. So last time we talked about how you can create PDF files that are interactive. And today I'm going to show you how you can protect those PDF files and eBooks from Taft. So this is going to show you how you can prevent an eBook that you've sold to someone or maybe just one you gave away for free to a lead or a client how you can protect it from being resold, so from reselling, as well as from being displayed on a website that's not favorable to you. So let's say you don't want your ebook to appear in the wrong context. I'm going to show you just how you can do that in less than five minutes. So for this, I'm going to use flow paper. And the way this works is you're going to add in your PDF file in here. Then you'll select design. This is just going to be how you view your PDF file. I'm going to opt for the realistic 3D. And now we're going to wait for the PDF file to be fully imported. And after this, we're going to check what this looks like. So I recommend going through every single page that you have to just make sure that everything is displayed correctly. In most cases, it's going to be. And um, this also gives you an opportunity to use flow paper to add in those interactive elements like links, videos, extra images, pop-ups that I talked about in my previous video, which I'm going to link in the description below in case you do want to add that. Now, moving on to the protection part, all you have to do is go to publish and let's say you want to host this in the cloud and right before we upload it, we're going to go to publication protection. Now you have two options. The most popular one and the one you've commonly seen around is password protection. So this essentially means that you will set a password that people have to type in before they access your publication. So this can be anything. You're just going to type it here. It can be something like donuts or whatever. So this is the password. And then when you save this, we're going to click on start upload. And if you don't have your website, you can just use the URL right here, copy it. And basically you can send this link to a buyer or you can use this with a team in a work setting to send and share internal documents. So for example, if you're a manager and you want to share an internal report, you can share this then the employees that have the password will add it in here. So it's donuts in this case, and that's it. They have access to the file online, anywhere essentially. Now another option for publication protection is adding a protected embed. So what this will allow you is to only publish your ebook on a domain of choice. So for instance, if you want to only be able to display your ebook on your website, you're going to come in here, add in the URL of your website. In this case, I'm going to add my own website. And when you click on OK, start the upload, and then you're going to get an embeddable code right here to either a clickable miniature of the PDF file or the entire publication if you want to display it on a landing page, let's say. So what this is going to do is, again, it only allows your PDF file to be shared on your domain of choice. So this means you don't risk the chance of seeing your ebook, your PDF files on a shady website, on a spam website, or just in the wrong context. And in case you do want to share this PDF file with, let's say, a partner, or maybe you just have an event going on and you want to share this ebook with the attendees for that event, you can either, you know, just redirect people to your own website or copy the ebook and create a new embeddable link, an embedded code essentially, that this partner or event host can put on their own website. So this ensures that people won't be able to copy your PDF file from elsewhere, even if, you know, that website, that domain was approved by you. Now, besides password protection and establishing an embed code for your own domain, you also have the option to add in a lead form. 
So if you're not selling your content, but you do want to get something in exchange for that content, aka to get your content, you can add a lead form. So what this is going to do is it's going to ask for typically your future readers, aka your leads email address. So basically you can, you have two options. You can either just share two to three pages for free and then ask leads for their email address. So in this case, we're going to display this pop-up on let's say page four. You have the option to ask for a name or um, just stick with the email. My recommendation is to stick with the email unless you do need to create you know, custom emails, custom messaging that include this person's name in the future. And then you, know, you add in your details in here like uh, the call to action essentially to prompt them, to motivate them to give their email. So in this case, it can be something like share your email to read more or something more convincing like get the rest for free with an email. You also have the option to display this on the very first page. So this means you don't give any of the content for free. This is entirely up to you. And you also have the option to kind of like test out your readership and your leads and see what they'll be most responsive to. And you can allow them to skip this pop-up or not. So in this case, they will decide, again, if you keep the skip option, they, the leads, will decide if they want to give you this email or not. So what I would recommend in this case is maybe play with the title here and write something like subscribe to our newsletter, get a free template, or just an extra resource. So this will tempt them to give your email to receive something else besides, you know, the PDF you have here. So this is another way of protecting your uh, content or really a method to ensure that qualified leads, only qualified leads, access your content. Finally, I also wanted to talk about some other restrictions you can have for your PDF file. So in Flow Paper, if you go on the right hand side of the menu, besides the customization options, you have some extra controls. So from here, you can essentially decide who can download a file, who can print it, as well as if you want to enable text copying or not. So notice when I click on the download button on the right side, this download icon pops up here. So when I remove this and I share this file, you can see right now with a buyer or a collaborator or even a team member who might not have the right to download or print a um, PDF file, they just won't be able to do this. Likewise, there's the print button. Notice right now I'm going to click it and it's going to pop up here. So if I share this version right here with a collaborator, they will be able to easily just print the entire ebook straight away. While if I remove this component, again, your buyer, collaborator, team member won't be able to do this. And then under desktop components, you have the text select button, which is this one here. And now I'm going to remove it and we're going to save the file. We're just going to host it on the cloud. And basically now, if I try to copy text, this is going to be impossible because as you can see, I do not have the text selection option. So everything is displayed as an image as opposed to text. Now, to be clear, if you are selling an ebook, you might want to keep the download button as well as the print button and even the text select button on just because people paid for this. So they might want to download it so they can have it at hand, you know, whenever they want to offline, or they might just prefer printing it so they can, you know, have it uh, available if they're cooking in this case. But if you're just sharing a report with someone who does not have the right to save this to begin with or to print it, or if you just don't want people to copy text and maybe reuse it somewhere else, 
then you definitely want to turn off all of these options and keep your navigation bar at the top as simple as possible. And this is really it. Again, a couple of quick ways of ensuring your content is uh, displayed in the right places, not being shared on strange websites, as well as, you know, if you're just planning on working with different collaborators, employees, uh, you know, just team members who might not have the full rights to this content. Or maybe, again, you could just be sharing it with somebody from, uh, you know, a, a partner of yours and you don't want them to download your content or print it or just reuse it elsewhere. Again, these are perfect methods of uh, protecting your ebook from theft and from um, just being used in the wrong places. If you're interested in other ways in which you can protect your content before selling it or just using it, feel free to leave a comment and uh, I will leave a link again to the other tutorial for adding interactive elements to PDF files as well as to flow paper in the description below. Have a great rest of the day.